our 4.30 council work session. Maggie, could you read the roll, please? Okay. Ms. Cole? Here. Mr. Jones? Here. Mr. Schmidt? Here. Mr. Morrissey? Here. Mr. Wolper? Here. Mr. Hart? Here. Motion to approve the agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. We're here today to have, uh, talk about two different things. Uh, the goals and priorities that council set for yourselves back to couple months ago and adopting those officially and also uh, Susie's uh, proposed uh, new bid opening procedures. Susie? Well, we'll start with the goals. Um, all of you should have received the document that was put together by Jeff Schott. more so than, than goals, but um, it's kind of what council wants from staff and how you would like us to proceed with moving forward with these, these uh, priorities. Um, the beginning is simply just kind of recapping how we, what process we took to come up with these and then a very long list of accomplishments, which is um, quite impressive. And then there's a list of the issues and concerns and trends and opportunities that we see coming or that we're currently dealing with. And then if you get to page 11, you see the ongoing commitments and priorities that staff is currently working on and that council um, has been supportive of and, and that will be ongoing. And page 12 is where the three items that you voted on to say were your top priorities basically for the next two years that you want staff working on. The first one being evaluating the city pay system and develop programs um, to address the, comp the compression issues, the comp do a, comp uh, I talk compensation, today. a compensation study, study um, our pay scales look at our performance evaluations and look at the possibility of a merit-based pay, um, also doing a job audit and revised job description based on job, upon job duties. That's the first item, which is several items that will equal one, one big project. Um, the second and third items were actually tied via your votes, which would be um, looking into the possibility of a transfer station and also developing communication strategies for, um, for the city as far as marketing and, and an image campaign. And then there, as you guys know, there were several other items that were right there that you guys definitely um, supported but didn't rise to the top. So these will be primarily staff's main three focuses. What I would like to propose, and I'm certainly open to any suggestions, is that on a quarterly basis, we obviously staff will be working on it nonstop <laughs> going forward. But on a quarterly basis, we come and kind of give progress reports as to what we're doing, what, and get direction from, from council on a quarterly basis as to where we're going with achieving the, the priorities that you guys have listed. Um, but I'm certainly open to however you would like to like us to proceed with these things. I, you know, initially it's probably going to be looking at how to lay the groundwork for these projects, and, <coughs> and then obviously funding and that sort of stuff will come as we go forward. Um, but there's going to definitely need to be some investigation stages where we look into what these projects would entail um, and how how broad you guys want them. So I am open to suggestions, but that is that is what I would suggest is just a quarterly update where we come and tell you, based on these three priorities, where we are and what we're doing and, and how it's coming. I think these are all very large projects um, that certainly should be able to get underway. Um, one, maybe two of them could get wrapped up in 24 months, but it, they're pretty, pretty big projects. So um, I think they're, they'll involve several departments, and they're definitely not just a, a one-man thing. So we'll probably put some teams together to work on the different items and so bring them forward. Susie, so I guess um, uh, you know I've been pushing for a transfer station forever, but at the same time, I don't want to waste staff time on a transfer station if it's not going to happen in the CIP program. So I, I question whether we want to 
really look into that if it's not going to happen anyway. You guys hold we, it on. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> that wasn't I, my vote. As a staff representative, I think that's exactly what we want you to do is put that on here so that we start trying to figure out how to work it into the CIP. Right. Oh, I yeah, was I was looking at the CIPs program that you sent us and I didn't even see transfer station even written down. Well that's just for 2015. Right. Yeah. And that's just for this coming up fiscal year so a transfer station and I, I know very little about it is going to be such a big project that there would be a year of planning oh. prior to needing funds so yeah. if we can start working on it now to, to get all that studying done then we would put it in next year's CIP for fiscal year. Okay. Take two, the future year, right? 16. Yeah. Yeah, we know right. it'll be two years plus whenever we start, just to, just talking. But we've got to start somewhere, and I think you guys voting that four out of, at least four out of, well, how many were, six were there, so at least four out of the six voted that this is one of the top priorities, so we need to start looking into it and, and see what it'll entail and what kind of costs will be involved and, and what process it would take to get there. As far as the rest of you are concerned, that would be one of my top priorities, but I, I'm only one of seven. So, Susie, if I could, uh, yep. yeah, I think doing a quarterly update, I think that's a great idea. The other thought I've got is, you know, looking at those three items, what I would suggest we consider is maybe assigning a couple, two or three councilmen to each one of those projects, too. I know the, that item number one, I mean, that's right up Carolyn's alley and Quentin's alley. I mean, they have more expertise, more knowledge on that. Uh, that transfer station, I'm, I'm real interested in that, and I think having, and, and I know Ryan is, and I think, you know, part of that conversation may or may not be affected by the discussion about other options with waste management, so maybe we don't even go that far. I mean, who knows, but, but uh, and then the third item, our marketing folks, whoever might have an interest in that, I would, you know, in, in having council as part of that whole conversation, two or three in each one of those three items, I think that would be a good place to start too, give us a little bit more ownership. I would recommend two, just so that we can keep it internal and have work meetings or, without having to. Three or two Gabby, is that what you're trying to say? No. No, I'm just thinking <laughs> instead of having to have just council just meetings on them, I think we'd be better just off just yeah. being able to pull staff together when, yeah. when needed and then advise. Because um, obviously we'll come back to the public meetings on, on a quarterly basis and let everybody know what our update is on them, keep them productive. So I'm I'm totally. Okay. I mean, that'd be my suggestion. I like it. How do you want to decide who's going to be assigned to which team? Well, let's we'll show of hands who who would like item number one. Which was uh, the pay, pay system, for performance pay, and that type of thing. I mean. I think Quinn That's my second choice. Been, yeah, they've been the most vocal on those items. No, oh, we haven't. I, I don't well, have David's been pretty vocal well, on yeah, that, too. Uh, so so we talked about the whole uh, option know, number three is my thing. favorite. Right. I'll take number one if I have to. <laughs> <laughs> one's fine by me. Quinn, what would you like? I like one and three. But I'll, I'll, I'll go anywhere. That's not Susan's. Good man. <laughs> Team <laughs> correct That's answer. Except right. for number <laughs> two. <laughs> That's right. Well, yeah, I'd rattle them out of the way. I'd have to get it down. <coughs> don't get it. Susie, I want to be number two. Number two. You can't. Can there's no one. I, I'm still not clear on who's on one. <laughs> I'm not sure who's on first or who's on second. I'll be number one, and I'll be okay. ex officio for number three. Okay, so I have Mr. Morrissey and Mr. Hart for item one. Ms. Cole. And Mr. Jones for item three, which is, says to tie, which would be the communication strategy. And transfer station, I've heard Mr. Schmidt and Mr. Welper. I'd like to have that too. And back I can't do that. Why? I'm not number I'm not on number three. You're on number one. You're divided into one and number two. Yeah, we, we may have to do three on some of them. It's, it's completely up to you guys. Mr. Ryan, what would you like to do? Yeah, I'm not interested in any of them. Excellent. <laughs> that works out very good. That's very good. Okay. Excellent. Yeah, <laughs> Excellent. 
That works. Okay. That's funny. Got my marching orders. Motion so <laughs> we'll uh, we'll work internally with with the different department heads and find out who internally should be on on yeah, which ones of these and create it. Oh, but it sounds too much like my regular job. <laughs> You're not going to get um, she's just, trying so, so just so we can be consistent oh. in the way we talk about these, these are not necessarily goals. These are priority projects, right? In my opinion, yes. Okay. That, that's what these are. These are these are projects and priorities that council um, voted that they would like staff efforts placed into these items. Um, at least, and I think quarterly will be a good way to find out, you know, we may very well get into one or two or three of these and decide, you know, looking at it is all we want to do and now it's not, you know, not the time to move forward, but um, which is why I think it's a good idea to come back quarterly and, and share what we've found out. Um, the next section on here is organizational effectiveness. And I think we're certainly doing several of these as we go. Um, reviewing code enforcement activities, I think our ordinances are a prime example of working on trying to, to clean up some of the ordinances to get that going. Um, we're going to talk about the bid process on there, so we've definitely um, worked on two of those. I think item five will tie back into your number one priority. Um, and so we're working on them, and again, I think during those quarterly updates, we can also let council know how we're doing on those. And that first bullet on uh, economic development, Noel and I had a conversation about that just last week, so we're getting closer to being able to make a recommendation on that. Fabulous. And then there's my comments. That's all I have on the goals, unless anybody else has any other suggestions or, or whatnot, I Let's think. Let's start with that. Okay, I think that's a good starting point. So your next step, Susie, will be to put that on the council agenda for adoption. Is that correct? Why am I so loud? Is that the way it's supposed to be? Susie was really loud, too. I don't even have a microphone. Is that better? Okay. Um, it, I like the, like the microphone's like right like that. Yes. I, we can certainly do a, a motion on, um, I can put it on next week's council agenda to adopt Council the council priorities list. Okay. Um, I mean, per Mr. Schott, that was the next step was to actually adopt it yes. officially so mm -hmm. that they become a priority. Yep. Okay. Yep. So we'll do, we'll just do a motion to do that okay. next week. I didn't put it on this one in case we wanted to okay. change anything of how it was worded or not, but I think we're sitting good there. Um, the other item on the agenda, we'll move into that, is the council meeting bid openings. Um, I, based upon some of the feedback that I've had from the mayor and council and, and staff um, and your goal setting session, I looked into our bid process and looked into what other cities our size are doing. The ones. There was not a single city that I contacted and got information from that opens their bids actually at the meetings. Um, everyone that I contacted opens them prior to the meeting on a, a, a day earlier um, and then actually does the bid tab at the public hearings, which seems like a much more efficient way to do things rather than struggling to open them and whether they're added up or not added up and that sort of thing. So what I am proposing is that um, we do a resolution setting the data hearing just like we do now and then at least 10 days obviously there's sometimes where we don't have the bid opening two weeks out it's it's three or four um, and if that happens obviously this day will move but at least 10 days out on every Thursday at three o'clock we'll designate that as our bid opening time at City Hall um, it'll be posted based on what council has set by resolution it'll be a public meeting anybody's welcome to attend some all that will be done at those meetings is that the bids are opened um, and recorded and then handed to the department head and then the following Monday we will hold the the public hearing and do everything just like we do now but rather than um, opening all the bids we'll read the bid tab so that you get all the the amounts 
and then typically the following week the department head will um, submit a resolution to award the contract to whoever the vendor is that won the hearing or the bid opening they can and, and other cities do if there was a need to if it's a project that needs to move forward faster we would um, be in compliance if at that public hearing after we've read the bid tab if they actually did a resolution to award the bid as well um, I don't think that'll be our standard process but in in instances where things need to move um, quickly I'm, something is broken needs fixed that sort of thing um, we certainly can which would shorten our time frame for turnaround on getting projects going so how, how, does it, how does this compare to the current time it takes are we just take, are we just saying that instead of being in an accounting meeting where we're bidding for police uniform and alternates we're not going to listen to all 40 alternates at that time we'll do it at another time but how does how does the time frame compare in general the time frame would be exactly the same however it does give us the option of trimming a week off of that turnaround so for instance something like police uniforms where maybe there is no reason to go out to that third week and you know it's not a big construction project where there's a lot to review and that sort of stuff after the public hearing and after the reading of the bid tab the department head could submit to award the bid that night so it could trim a week off of the process And that is how. Can I ask a question? Yep. Sorry. This is for names for $25,000 or more. This is for all the the bid processes that come to council, so they're all $25,000 so or more. Correct. The same dollars. Yep. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Basically, the only thing that's happening is we're moving the bid opening from Monday to council meeting to Thursday at 3 o'clock and giving the opportunity to have it done to, to award the bid the night that we read the bid tapes. The benefits for that is one I think it'll improve accuracy as staff once they're open we'll have time to actually review the bids so that we make sure we're reading the correct amounts and that they're added up correctly and all of that sort of stuff rather than <coughs> opening them and, and trying to decipher them sitting right here um, we'll be able to by the time we bring the bid tab to council if there was an error in it or, or whatnot we'd be able to say that publicly at the meeting we do have instances where a contractor or somebody will submit a bid and they haven't added up their totals right or that sort of stuff but we've already read it in the public hearing what their amount was so um, obviously it'll still be open in the public and their bid is what it is but we'll know if there's any discrepancies by the time we get to council for the public hearing does anybody have any further comments regarding yes. that policy no. yes so I think this is a move toward efficiency and streamlining because there was a day when Mr. Getty read every single cigarette permit. <laughs> they were not part of the consent agenda. So I think this is a step is in the right direction. As Susie said, uh, Susie and I have gone over this several times, and there, there isn't any other city that we found that opens their bids at the council meeting. They're all done sometime prior to the council meeting, whether it's earlier on Monday or Friday or Thursday or whatever day their council meeting, it's always prior to that. And it just seems like it makes a much more efficient process. So we, we will have this on for next Monday to approve this uh, procedure. Well, uh, Susie, would this change at all if there comes a time when we actually do have those computers right in front of us? You'd be able to see the bid tab in front of you. I would still need to read it publicly into record what all the the bids were, um, so that the public gets it as well. But Eric, <laughs> I'll pretend I'm the mayor for a second. Eric Thorson, you know, we just had a question. So we didn't get much chance to look at this, but Susie and I have been talking about some things before. We certainly support this, but. We were just kind of wondering why Thursday, why three o'clock? That seems like kind of an odd time. It's right in the middle of the afternoon. If you're busy and doing that sort of thing, you're at least during the construction season, a lot of people are out, they've got to come back. We were sort of thinking like maybe one o'clock or four o'clock or something. I, I, I didn't know if there was some particular reason for that particular day and time. It just There was no particular reason for the, for the day or the time, Eric, quite honestly. Uh, we, we first of all talked about Friday and we thought about all of the 
hassles that go along with Friday and a lot of times if people take days off and long weekends they take Friday afternoons off so we kind of ruled Friday out and if we three o'clock was strictly arbitrary and uh, we just thought it was during working hours and maybe people would be more apt to come because rarely do we get contractors to come to Monday night during off working hours so we thought maybe if we had them during working hours contractors would actually come and I'm certainly open to yeah, 4 o'clock I mean, if we, we wanted to. figure the Friday thing, but it was right. just the time at 3 o'clock. We just thought, at least for us, because we Would get you really recommend busy four, then? the field people. That, that would four be better? Or one be better? One or four. Just something so it's not right in the middle of the afternoon. It kind of erupts whatever you're doing. Pick your, and wherever pick your you're poison. So, uh, I don't really care. And I, just, <laughs> <laughs> I guess one just, of them, I can think one will be better. Because that way you could have maybe have the bids due at noon. And then you've got them organized by one or something. I, I don't know, of course, that's kind of your lunch hour, too, so I, I'm trying to have I think we prefer the, the beginning of the afternoon and the end, probably more than the beginning. I'm certainly okay I mean, with 1 o'clock. Again, there was no, no <laughs> really reason to put it at 3 o'clock. Does anybody have any heartburn with that at all? Well, 1 is fine. Okay, we're going to make it. That's yeah. 4. Let's make it against it. We'll make it <laughs> 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock, and they'll be due at noon because we'll need a little bit of time to... Very good. Do the bit taps. So. Uh, further comments on yes, oh. sir. Very first thing, just um, how quickly we put this? We've got a project we're about ready to bring to council, and we need to get it into documents. <coughs> we're going to change this pretty quickly. So it's our next pump station project. So <coughs> Amy was just asking me this morning, and I said, "Well, I think I'll have more information tonight." But are you setting it next week? Uh, I think my, that, I think that was the my plan thought was, was anything that's set next week, we're not going to worry about. Well, the new we need to bring it to council next month. Set the date. So right. Anything that's be, through next week that's said, I wasn't going to mess with just because a lot of people have already been drafting those documents and stuff. So, so we'll, we'll give time to make the change. So, after yeah. The yep. Okay. Very good. Motion Any further comments? There's a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We're adjourned. Thank you. Add committee meetings and the agenda meetings. I'm still going to hold firm that uh, I would prefer not to, to do agenda meetings, and uh, so far I haven't gotten that overridden by any of the council members. But I thought the committee meetings, you know, uh, the, the guys are already here <coughs> televising the uh, what do we just do? Work sessions, and they're here televising the council sessions, so they just got to stand up there and keep cameras running and do the committee meetings. So we're at least going to try with the televising. stand up there and keep cameras running and do the committee meetings. So we're at least going to try with the televising. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this April 21st meeting of the Waterloo City Council. We have a nice crowd here tonight, and welcome to those of you that might be watching us uh, on our public access uh, television channel. Madam Clerk, would you start us by reading the roll, please? Certainly. Ms. Cole? Here. Mr. Jones? Here. Mr. Schmidt? Here. Mr. Lynn? Here. Mr. Morrissey? Here. Mr. Wilford? Here. Mr. Hart? Here. Thank you very much. If you would all join me, please, in standing for just a moment of silent reflection or with a hat on, if you please remove that, thank you very much.
pledge tonight is going to be led by our city clerk, Ms. Susie Shear. Susie, please. Please join me in reciting the pledge. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic which it stands, one nation under God, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all very much. You may be seated. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Hart. I'd like to make a motion to approve the agenda as proposed and also the minutes of April 14, 2014, regular session. Very good. Thank you, Councilman Hart. Council, do you have any comments or concerns regarding the agenda or the minutes? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. We have one proclamation tonight, and I'm going to ask our own Paul Hunting to step to the front uh, to accept it, please. Paul is our Director of Leisure Services and, as of late, Director of Everything Trees. <laughs> Tonight's proclamation is to celebrate Arbor Week in Waterloo. So we have a City of Waterloo, Iowa proclamation, whereas trees provide a pleasing environment in Waterloo for the benefit of our residents and visitors. And whereas trees contribute greatly to Waterloo's positive image, and whereas the optimum reforestation of Waterloo will require public participation and cooperation, resulting in an attractive community. And whereas the Iowa legislature has designated the last Friday in April as Arbor Day throughout Iowa. Now, therefore, I, Buck Clark, Mayor of the City of Waterloo, Iowa, do hereby proclaim the week of April 20th through the 26th, 2014, as Arbor Week in Waterloo, Iowa. And I all citizens of Waterloo to celebrate this occasion and the beauty of our city by planting a tree, as long as it's not an ash tree. Right, Paul? Correct. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Um, thank you for this proclamation. I guess that's it, on. It's on. Okay. It is, um, it is on. As the mayor indicated, we're in the process of losing thousands of trees in this community and it's a uh, it's a sad situation but it also is thank you it also is an opportunity for us to uh, rise up and and plant trees to replace these as that happens uh, this friday as you mentioned is arbor day we'll have an arbor day celebration with the tree planting at prairie grove park with blessed sacrament uh, school green scene will be donating a tree for the planting and we have several other planting projects, uh, complements of Mid-American Energy. Uh, we have Public Works Landscaping and, and Tree Planting coming up this spring. We're going to replace 28 flowering crabapple trees on Home Park Boulevard. And we're going to plant a lot of trees along the new Sportsplex property. So again, thank you for this. I would like to mention this is our 30th consecutive year as being a Tree City USA. That's thanks to the council and the mayor for providing us with the budget that we need to have a comprehensive forestry program for Waterloo. So thank you. Thanks, Paul. Thanks for what you do. Yeah. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Hart. <coughs> I move that we receive, place on file, and approve the consent I move that we receive, place on file, and approve the consent agenda, items 1A through B6. Also with the approval of the consent agenda, I move that we make our bills payment, which will be read by our finance chair. The bills this week are $4,028,153.11, 4,028,153.11. Do you have any questions or comments regarding the consent agenda? Mr. Mayor, I'm Mr. going Hart. to abstain from 188, which is uh, okay. confirmed by Hawkeye. Any further comments? Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Morris? Yes. Mr. Welker? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Very good. Thank you, Council. Uh, we are going to do item number two, please. Uh, Oh, Bonetta Cole, and we do have Bonetta with us. Bonetta is uh, 
new to our Met Transit Board, so uh, that's a new appointment, and we rely very heavily on our all of our volunteers uh, to step up and, and help us out on boards and commissions. So, Vanetta, thank you very much, and uh, much appreciated for what you do. Vanetta, where are you? That was your Okay, because <laughs> you're right, I did see her now. Okay. She was probably disheartened that I didn't mention her off the bat. Anyway, uh, thank you, Vanetta. And thank you, Steve, Mr. Schmidt, for uh, pointing that out to me. Uh, let's get into our public hearings now, Mr. Schmidt. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to receive and file proof of publication of notice of public hearing next to the 2014 lift stations and complaint mowings with complaint snow removals. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The motion carries and the hearing is now open. Madam Clerk, were there any written objections on file item number two, our lift stations and compliant moings? Complaint no, moings? Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak either for or against item number two on tonight's agenda? A second time. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion and to close the hearing. Second. Very good. Council, do you have any comments? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to adopt a resolution confirming approval of plans, specifications, form of contract, etc. Second. Uh, Madam Clerk, that's a roll call vote, please. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Morris? Yes. Mr. Welfer? Yes. Mr. Hart? No. <coughs> Ms. Cole? Yes. Very good. The motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to adopt a resolution ordering construction. Second. That also is a roll call vote. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Welford? Yes. Mr. Hart? No. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Very good. The motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion and receive and file and instruct the city clerk to open and read bids and refer to Waste Management Services Superintendent for review. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Madam Clerk, please. Option A is for $340.340.00. Sorry, their bid bond is in the form of a check for $1,500. Option B is for $720.720.00. Option C is for $8585.00. Option D is for $120.120.00. And option E is for $8585.00. Third bid is from Fleming's Landscape and More. The bid security is in the form of a check for $1,500. Option A is for $290, $290.00. Option B is for $340. 
Option D is for $120, 120.00, and option E is for $48, 48.00. And the final bid is from Robert Hopley Construction Company of Waterloo, Iowa. <coughs> Security is in the form of a check for $1,500. Option A is for $295, 295.00. Option B is for $345, 345.00. Option C is for $33, 33.00. Option D is for $50, 50.00. And option E is for $33, 33.00. Letter number three, please. Mr. Mr. Welper. Number three is a motion to receive and call two for publication for notice of public hearing for the request of Harris County of Waterloo, Iowa for a site plan amendment to the M2P plan industrial district to allow for the construction of an 80 by 125 foot, 10,000 square foot industrial building located east of 2366 Newell Street. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries and the hearing is now open. Madam Clerk, do we have any written objections on file? There were no objections. On file. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak either for or against item number three on tonight's agenda, the uh, site plan amendment for Harris Cleaning? Second time. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to close the hearing with recommendation of approval of planning, programming, and zoning commission. Second. Council, do you have any comments or concerns regarding this item? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to file, consider, and pass for the first time an ordinance amending the ordinance number 5079 as amended City of Waterloo Zoning Ordinance by amending the official zoning map referred to in the section 10 4 4, approving the site plan amendment on a certain property. Second. Madam Clerk, that's a roll call vote, please. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Welfer? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Very good. The motion carries. Ms. Blake, make a motion to suspend the rules. Second. Second. Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Welfer? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. Very good. The motion carries. I'd like to make a motion to consider and pass for the second and third time to adopt the ordinance. Second. Very good. Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Very good. Thank you, Council. That'll allow that project to go forward. Uh, motion carries. Item number four, please. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Hart? I move that we receive and file proof of publication of notice of public hearing for the Waterloo Cedar Falls Home Consortium FY 2015 One Year Action Plan for CDBG and Home <laughs> Program Fund. <laughs> and also to adopt the FY 2015 through FY 2019 five-year consolidated plan for the Waterloo Cedar Falls Home Consortium. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The motion carries, and the hearing is now open. Madam Clerk, are there any written objections on file to this item? There are none. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak either for or against our CDBG and Home Program Fund allocation? Yes, ma'am. If you please step to the microphone and give us your name and address, and please limit your comments to three minutes. My name is Patricia King. I am the uh, I'm the leader of I the Needle. My address is of the business of 522 Mulberry Street, and I simply came forward to ask if there are any questions concerning what I submitted, and if that everything is clear, I understand if there is anything that you would like me to explain. Okay, uh, Ms. King, thank you. I, I would refer to Mr. Jones. I, I, don't, I don't think so, or we'd have had something been notified. Uh, Council, do you have any questions of Mr. King, Ms., or Ms. King? She is one of the recipients, or one of the requests, anyway, for some CDBG funding. I don't have a question, or just a comment. Please keep up the good work. Yeah. The people Thanks. that you serve absolutely need it. And work at my goal to try and help the whole city, and, and we're working real hard at that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. King. Further comments from Council? 
Mr. Mayor, I move to close the hearing and receive and follow oral comments. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. The motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I move to adopt the resolution authorizing said plan and authorizing submission to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. Second. And that's a roll call vote, please, Madam Clerk. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lund? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Very good. That motion carries. Item number five, please. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Schmidt? Item number five, I'd like to make a motion to receive and file proof of publication of notice of public hearing, and that's for the fiscal year 2014 sidewalk repair program, zone four, and trail repairs, contract number 863. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries, and that hearing is now open. Madam Clerk, are there any written objections on file to item number five? Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak either for or against item number five, the sidewalk repair program and trails repair contract? Second time. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to close the hearing. Second. Council, do you have any questions or comments? No, sir. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Mr. Mayor, I'd like to uh, adopt a resolution ordering construction. Second. <coughs> Oops. I think that I skipped you, you one. Skipped I think one I skipped there, one. sir. I'm sorry. I'd like to adopt a resolution confirming approval of plans, specifications, form of contract, etc. Second on that one, sir. Very good. And that's a roll call vote. Ms. Cole? Yes. Just like Mr. you. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Wolfer? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. That motion carries. I'd like to adopt a resolution ordering construction. Second. Madam Clerk? Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. That motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to receive and file and instruct the city clerk to open and read bids and refer to city engineer for a review. Second. Very good. I need a roll call vote on that also, please, Madam Clerk. Motion. Motion. Uh, it's got a roll call next to it. <laughs> All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I just do what I'm told, Madam Clerk. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have one, two, three, four bids tonight on this. Uh, there's a, a base and, and some alternates and with different amounts by them. I'll let the uh, city clerk read them, and then they'll be on file. Okay, the first bid is from B&B Builders and Supply of Waterloo, Iowa.
base bid is for $231,178.67. 231 comma 178.67. The base bid plus alternate is $385,814.77. 385 comma 814.77. The final bid is from Todd Van Dorn Construction of Cedar Falls, Iowa. The bid bond is for 199,149.85 and the base bid plus alternate is 334,446.21 Very good, thank you, Madam Clerk. the resolutions please if we could start with the first three six seven and eight Mr. Mayor, please miss cole i move we adopt a resolution approving memorandum of agreement with waterloo community school district in the amount of one hundred eighty six thousand dollars to provide technology leadership network services and supplemental technology support services to the city and authorize mayor and city clerk to execute said document seven also a resolution approving cloverdale park lease with blackhawk county board of supervisors Advisors for the use of Cloverdale Park located at Longfellow Street and Midland Street for a term of three years in the amount of three dollars and authorize mayor and city clerk to execute said document and eight is a resolution approving submission of Cedar Trails partnership grant fund request for a snow compacting roller to assist and enhance cross-country ski grooming on city-owned golf courses in an amount not to exceed two thousand dollars sir very good thank you uh, miss cole council do you have any questions regarding six seven or eight mr. Mayor, just mr. A, jones just a quick question on number seven yes sir so is this a, a county-owned park that we're leasing well please county-owned property adjacent to um, county garage that has been a city park since the mid 70s it's uh, for whatever reason has never been conveyed to uh, the old park commission or the city of Waterloo um, at one time they were contemplating expanding that garage I don't think that they are contemplating that at this time but they've just chosen to continue to do it in three-year in increments okay so we've been maintaining this for years yes. mowing it yes since the 70s all right. Further questions? Madam Clerk, it's roll call vote, please. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Walper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes, again. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> she needed to check. The uh, <laughs> motion carries plus one. Uh, could I have someone do just nine and ten, please? The two ordinances, nine and ten, two resolutions, nine and ten. Mr. Uh, Morrissey. I'd like to adopt a uh, make a motion to adopt a resolution approving surveying and engineering agreement with AMET Incorporated of Waterloo, Iowa in conjunction with the traffic safety improvements for three high hazard intersections to include San Marlin Drive at LaPorte Road, Ainsborough Avenue at Downing Avenue, and Fletcher Avenue at University Avenue and authorized mayor and city clerk to execute said document. And number 10, a resolution approving request by Kesson Associates on the behalf of Iowa Development Enterprises LLC for the preliminary preliminary plat of the replat of Summerland Farms Lot 1 into a 12 lot residential subdivision located at the intersection of Summerland Drive and Dysart Road. Second. Very good. Council, do you have any questions or concerns regarding 9 or 10? Yes. Ms. Cole. Um, no. Could you explain the Summerlin Farms 
situation. I see in the documentation that we have that there's a bunch of missing information, yet we're still recommending that the replat be approved. I believe we've received, re no, Anderson Community Planning Development Director, I believe we've received a lot of the uh, information now or in the process of, of working on that with the applicant. Um, this was part of an overall master site plan. Um, out there's an RP planned residence district. Um, this is the northeast corner of that. Um, these uh, last 12 lots are also tied in with our community development um, state program for down payment assistance. Um, so this has been approved for there. So this will provide more units out there, provide uh, multi twin home type units in the area that was designated for multifamily or, or higher density of the planned district. But we're looking at single family or twin homes <coughs> in this area? These would all be twin homes on, on these lots, yeah. Okay, thank you. you no, know, if I could, while you're up there, just to reaffirm again, because some of us have had conversations with some of the residents out there about runoff issues, and these are not those six plexes or 12 plexes or whatever has been discussed, correct? Correct, um, the, there's a proposal going to the Planning Commission, there's uh, a proposal, there's some larger lots at the southeast corner and at the northwest corner that they've been looking at for higher density 12 plex type units. At this point, I believe the proposal going to the Planning Commission is in the southeast corner um, as you're out there, so kind of at the south end of Dyser where it ends um, for some 12 plexes there. That's near the drainage way. These are at the, the uh, entrance to, the, to uh, Summerland at the northeast corner. Thanks. These are a little bit confusing right now, uh, Council, or at least it was to me because there are actually, there, there are at least two, possibly three different proposals for the Summerlin area. This one I, I think will actually be fairly, uh, pretty amenable to the project. There will be six single story twin homes, so that'll, they'll be in a row, so there'll be six side by eaches. Uh, it should be relatively attractive and uh, a, good, uh, a good fit for that. Some of the other, there's, there's some more questions about, but these should be a pretty good fit. Are there further questions? Nine and 10, roll call vote please, Madam Clerk. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Walter? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Very good, uh, thank you, Council. Now let's do the next three, please, 11, 12, and 13. Mr. Hart? Uh, in 11, uh, right to move to adopt a resolution setting the date of public hearing <coughs> as May 5th, 2014 for um, approving lease agreements with Janet Kendo Post uh, for a period of 10 years for a property located, at, located on Riverside Drive, just west of 903 Riverside Drive. And in number 12 for uh, George Ryan and Loretta Ryan uh, for a period of 10 years just east of 727 Riverside Drive for one year, I mean at, for one dollar until December 31st. And also in 13 uh, for Darlene Yagla also for a period of 10 years Riverside Drive just south of 509 uh, Riverside Drive for one dollar and for all of those until December 31st 2024 and for all three instruct city clerk to publish notice Second. very good council do you have any questions regarding those three items 11 12 or 13 madam clerk those are roll call votes please Mr. Morrissey yes Mr. Walter yes Mr. Hart yes Ms. Cole yes Mr. Jones yes Mr. Schmidt yes Yes. Very good. The motion's carry. Let's do the last three resolutions, please. 14, 15, and 16. Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Morrissey. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to adopt a resolution approving award of contract to Larson Construction Company Incorporated of Independence, Iowa, in the amount of $3,570,000 and approving the contract bonds and certificate of insurance for the fiscal year 2014 Flowers Creek stormwater lift station and dry run creek improvements contract number 842 and authorized mayor and city clerk to execute said document <coughs> also a resolution approving award of contract to aspro incorporated of water iowa in the amount of eight million two hundred nine thousand two hundred eleven dollars and four cents and approving the contract bonds and certificate of insurance for the fiscal year 2014 street reconstruction program 
base bid and alternate A plus uh, division two, uh, contract number 859 and authorized mayor and city clerk to execute said document. And number 16, <coughs> resolution approving the contract bonds and certificate of insurance with Iowa Erosion Control Incorporated of Victor, Iowa in the amount of $1,094,138.38 in conjunction with the fiscal year 2014 West Airline Highway Rehabilitation Base bid plus all one of two, contract number 827, and authorized mayor and city clerk to execute said document. Second. Very good. Thank you, uh, Councilman Morrissey. Council, do you have any questions regarding 14, 15, or 16? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Jones. Did, did we get more than one bid on 16? I don't recall. I don't either. Eric, do you remember? Um, Eric Thorst is here. I believe we did get several. I think it was three. Thank you. Further questions? Madam Clerk, it's a roll call vote, please, on 14, 15, or 16. Mr. Welker? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes, on 14, 16, no, on 15. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes, on 14 and 16, no, on 15. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Yes. Very good. The motions carry. Uh, we have some ordinances that we need to uh, address uh, again. Item 17, please. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Schmidt. Item number 17, I'd like to make a motion to receive file, consider and pass for the third time and adopt an ordinance amending the 2007 Code of Ordinances of the City of Waterloo, Iowa by adding a new Chapter 14, Housing Cooperative Conversion of Title IX Building Regulations, and that's an ordinance amending. The 2007 Code of Ordinances of the City of Waterloo, Iowa, by adding a new Chapter 14 Housing Cooperative Conversion of Title IX Building Regulations. Second. Uh, very good. Council, do you have any comments regarding item 17? Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Welker? Yes. Very good. The motion carries. Item 18, please. Mr. Mayor? Mr. Morrissey? I'd like to make a motion to receive, file, consider, and pass for the second time an ordinance amending the City of Waterloo Zoning Ordinance Number 5079 by adding additional restriction for payday loan delayed deposit service businesses. And do I read the whole thing again? Mm -hmm. no. Okay. No. That's, that, that's good. Motion and a second. Uh, Council, do you have any questions, comments? Mr. Schmidt? Mr. Mayor, again, I would like to revisit this item and just ask uh, once again what what exactly it is that we think we're accomplishing with this and uh, who exactly it is we think we're helping and uh, I'd like to have that conversation. Who would you like to have it with? Well, whoever would like, like to answer it, you or anybody else. <laughs> Mr. Mayor? Mr. Sh uh, Morrissey? Uh, Councilman Schmidt, as I said before, um, uh, this whole ordinance and the concept of it uh, gets back to what I believe is a a basic premise of why uh, city government exists and that is for the good of the people. And this ordinance says, in effect, that neighborhoods do have a right to say that payday lenders cannot set up within their neighborhoods. It also has defined uh, protected uses, it's expanded that so that around those protected uses, uh, there is that 600 foot uh, setback so that they cannot set up around those areas as well. To me, it's a, it's a matter of neighborhoods of people who make up our neighborhoods saying that we have the right to decide that if we do not want these this sort of business in here, um, that, that we can uh, say no. And that's what this ordinance does. It does not in any way, shape, or form take any uh, payday lender businesses out of existence. Those will be there the day after this passes, the third reading, just like they are now. It doesn't change that at all. It does not uh, limit anybody's financial ability or financial freedoms whatsoever. This merely, to me, is a way of Waterloo saying to the people that you in the neighborhood have a right to have your neighborhood uh, decisions made that say that I want to protect my neighborhood from these businesses and that's what this ordinance does uh, the other thing I think it does it tells 
um, Iowa and our community in general that we do care about our neighborhoods and we do care about uh, what businesses go in our neighborhoods and the perception that uh, payday lenders uh, leave in neighborhoods is not a, a positive impression. And uh, again, that gets back to in improving the image of Waterloo, uh, not only amongst the citizens of Waterloo, but for people uh, throughout Iowa. Well, and I, again, I think that we talked last time of the 11 payday lenders, I think is the accurate number. There's one of them that's in an area that we would probably describe as a economically challenged area, and that area has been economically challenged for far longer than that payday lender's been there. The other 10 are in commercial districts, so I don't, I don't understand how one has to do with the other. Um, you've attempted to tie them together with alcohol establishments and liquor establishments, and uh, I, I don't see the correlation there. The case was made last week about some studies from I don't remember where about public safety issues with these businesses, and I think our local uh, law enforcement group said we've had absolutely no public safety issues on any of these facilities. Most of them don't have cash, they deal in checks, so there's not an issue there. And again, I, I don't see how the neighborhood is gonna determine this because the, neighbors, the neighborhoods aren't gonna be voting <coughs> what is or isn't allowed to open in their, their business. I don't, I don't quite understand that concept. Councilman Schmidt, I do, you understand uh, uh, zoning variances, don't you? I do. Okay, well, a payday lender could uh, asked to set up in some one of these neighborhoods and ask for a variance, couldn't they? I would think so. And the neighborhoods can get together like we did out at uh, 2320 University Avenue and we stopped that liquor store from getting put in at the Hostess uh, Bread Store, didn't we? Didn't the I neighborhood do that? So. Well, I think that's the, I, that's the concept behind this. Gotcha. But we need the zoning there in order for that to prevail in the future. And so at the end of the day, who who is it, or what is this going to do to the folks that use those services today? It's not going to do anything different. They're, they're going to have their payday lender they can go to. Plus, I hope uh, uh, that there's going to be information that, that can be given about other venues that can be used that are little known in this area, such as an, a number of credit unions that supply uh, unsecured, uh, low dollar, low interest loans that has not got out in the community much to speak of. So I, don't, I don't know if there's any financial institutions that will approve a, a non-secured loan. I don't, I don't know that anybody else is allowed to you do that. You need to contact the Iowa uh, State Association of Credit Unions and you'll find out different Councilman Schmidt. There's at least four in the area here. And they provide unsecured loans? Unsecured, low interest, uh, okay. low low dollar loans. We have uh, someone wanting to speak at the microphone, uh, I, I believe, anyway, unless you're holding up the call. <laughs> no, no, it's holding me up. <laughs> Forrest Dillaboo, 1725 Huntington Road. I did contact one of these alternate solutions that was mentioned last week, and I talked with them enough that I think I pretty well understand how they do theirs. Number one, one of these people goes to them, and they want a loan. Minimum loan is $400. So if you needed $25 for groceries, diapers, medicine, or whatever, you're going to take a $400 loan out. And of that $400, $200 is going to be put in what they call a savings account that you can't touch. $20 is going to be called a fee that they're going to take from you before you get your money. You're going to walk out the door with $180. On that $400, you're going to pay 19% interest and you're gonna have six months to pay back $400. And 19% interest. Now you only took home $180, so in my mathematics, I'm saying you're paying 38% interest on the money that you took home, the money that you could use, so you're gonna be paying 38% interest. For my children and my people I know, I don't think that's a real good deal, that 38% interest, when the savers there are getting less than one half of 1%. Forrest. Thanks, Thanks Forrest. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. Could I address? You may. Uh, Forrest, I just, uh, I, I'm sure you're referring to the Viridian uh, Powell. I uh, prefer oh, okay. not to mention their name, but that's fine if you want to. Well, I will. 
Um, and because uh, I've talked to them, I talked also to Cedar Falls uh, um, Credit Union, uh, also involved as DePaco, and uh, there's a Public Employees Credit Union. So there's other credit unions that do provide those, what I just referred to as the small dollar low interest uh, loans that are available to people, as low as uh, $50. So, uh, it, you know, just do some other checking for us is all I ask you to do. I had Thanks. the name of one lady and I got her card and she said that was the way they do it. And she had not looked at it as being 38% interest as I do. And I'm sure you will. If, if you only get $180 that you can spend, that's 38%. Thanks for it. Yes, sir. Thank you. My name is Joe Gordon. I'm a homeowner at 510 Wilshire Avenue in Waterloo. I'm also a criminology professor at UNI. I appeared here last week and discussed some of the research that you referred to. And I think there might have been a little confusion. Uh, I don't know if you had an opportunity to read that research, but what that research says about payday lending and its relationship to crime is, is does it relate to crime committed at or in the near proximity of payday lenders. What it refers to is crime that's facilitated by virtue of adding another criminogenic influence in a community. And here's how that works. Uh, many customers, not all, but many customers who come to these payday lenders are pretty desperate people for whatever reasons. But they might be employed or part-time employed. They might, they might be able to come in with a check. Uh, some are, are addicted to drugs. There many, you know, many drug addicts are addicted to, or, or have part-time or full-time employment. So that, but they're desperate for money that they can't get anywhere else. So they go to one of these payday lenders, they get their loan, and then over time they end up paying exorbitant interest rates that increase their desperation, increase the potential for them to be impulsive, uh, dangerous, uh, engage in you know, further criminal activities. I think ratchets up the risk to our law enforcement personnel. And just basically, again, adds to the criminogenic influences in our community. And this isn't me saying this. This isn't an opinion, you know. It really is in vogue nowadays for people to think of science as just another opinion that people have. But the research analysis that I gave you last week is really top-notch, really good scientific research. And it demonstrates quite clearly that these payday lending, and in commercial districts, by the way, that these payday lending uh, uh, outfits, even after we control for other community variables, contribute to crime rates in our communities. So I'm going to say again what I said last week, that it's one thing to be tough on crime, and sometimes that's really a good thing to do. I'm not opposed to being tough on crime in some instances. But it's also really good for our communities if we can be smart on crime. And I think restricting the propensity of these, uh, the presence of these outfits in our communities, and I say this as a Waterloo citizen, is really one way to help improve public safety. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gordon. Yes, sir. Good evening, Josh Wilson, uh, 2831 Saratoga Drive. Um, I have a couple issues. First of all, I'd just like to point out to the council, I, I'm a UNI graduate, um, whereas I respect the professor's research for every research study, I'm sure you all know, there's another research study that's gonna prove it to be inaccurate. So um, I would question who was involved in the research study, what city it was looking at, and all that. I, I don't buy into um, one study, but the real issue I have here Councilman Morrissey said that this isn't inter interfering with anyone's financial freedom. I would argue it's interfering with the financial freedom of anyone who wants to open a payday lending facility in the city of Waterloo. Um, if we're gonna start here with restricting businesses that are regulated by the state, they're not violating any laws. If we're gonna start trying to be big brother and big sister to uh, businesses in town, I mean, why don't we go further? Uh, LaPorte Road has a Wendy's, a McDonald's, a Taco Bell, a Taco John's, only one subway, no fitness centers in there. I don't know if you're aware, but since 1970, the American obesity rate has tripled. Um, we've got, let's see, one in five children between the ages of six and 17 are now considered overweight. Are we gonna start regulating where people can eat? I understand that some people may take uh, advantage of these institutions and they may get in over their head, but I don't think it's the city council or any government body's responsibility to step in and babysit these people. Um, I, I feel sorry for them, but they have to make decisions just like I do. And I think, you, I think you're wrong when you say you're not stepping on anyone's financial freedom because uh, I think we need to see this city grow and businesses that come in, we shouldn't be regulating them. So if you're gonna look at payday lenders, look at the other businesses in town that have scientific studies that prove that they're hurting uh, the community as well. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wilson.
Yes, ma'am. Good evening again, Mayor and City Council. I'm Renata Sack. I live at 414 Sunset Road in Waterloo. And I just want to ask a question of all of you. Do you want Waterloo to be known as a visionary city, as a happy city, as a city that embraces good sport, that embraces parks, that embraces culture, music, as well as galleries and museums where we're just sitting? Or do we want to be known as a city that has 80% of very, very low income um, people living here all the children are on free lunches and help in school, and everybody needs help to get from Monday to the next Monday because they don't have enough income to carry the expense of their groceries. Anybody who does that, anybody who needs a $25 loan to get from one day to the other can never ever come out of that again. It's a never ending tale of misery, and you get deeper and deeper and deeper into debt and that that's not something we should propagate and we should condone and we should make possible. We should do all we can to have good businesses in our town that employ people well on, well, on good income and we should not give more credence to payday loaners. Please think about it very deeply. Thank you, Renata. I didn't come here today to talk about this issue, but as long as it's brought up, I do have a few things to say. Um, I agree with the lady that was just up here. These people, they are desperate. I agree with this professor, too. Um, people that get these loans, they're desperate. They don't have any other way to get the money. For whatever reasons, they can't go to a bank or credit union, usually, and get a loan because they don't have collateral or a cosign. So what they do is they go to these payday loans, which charge an absorbent amount of interest. And then they go back every time. Because as the lady just pointed out, they don't have enough money to pay their bills anyways. And they either don't have a job or they don't have a good enough job to pay what their monthly expenses are. So what it creates is a vicious cycle. You're enabling these businesses to rip off the poor. And <coughs> I agree with the, uh, excuse me, I forgot your name. Yeah. Joe Gordon. Joe Gordon, I, I agree with his research. And I agree with the lady that was just up here. Um, I've seen it. I've known people that work at these payday loans. They have the regular customers that come in every day. They go into work, and the doors are still locked. And these people are lined up sometimes. It, you know, it's the first day they're eligible for their next loan. And it's, like I said, it's a vicious cycle. And uh, unfortunately, our city allows that to happen. That's all I have to say to that. Thank you, Mr. Hart. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, if Council, do you have any more conversation? I mean, it, there's obviously a reason we have seven people, and the reason we have a democratic process is uh, that we agree to disagree on some items. So let's uh, take a roll call vote, Madam Clerk, please. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? No. Mr. Lind? No. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Wilper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Very good. The motion carries. Uh, and we will uh, not even ask for a suspension of the rules. We'll address this for a third reading next week. Um, item number 19, please. Mr. Mayor. Ms. Cole. I move we receive file, consider, and pass for the second time an ordinance amending the 2007 Code of Ordinances of the City of Waterloo by adding a new section 302-8-1 parens 3B5-6 front yard parking citation to the International Property Maintenance Code, Article B. Second. Very good. There's a motion and second on item number 19. Council, uh, do we have uh, questions and comments and concerns regarding this item? Would somebody like to? We have a little overview. Sure. Maria, would you uh, please uh, tell us who you are and, and uh, explain I item 19 to us, please? Maria Tillard, uh, Code Enforcement Foreman. Uh, basically, what we are asking is to do away with the 10-day notice um, that we have actually been giving the Waterloo citizens for parking in the front yard. 10-day notice given, 10-day notice is um, complied with. A week later, we're being called back to the same property 
for the same violation and is um, it takes less than 24 hours to remove their car from the front yard 13 14 days later we're back at, at a lot of the same properties so what we are proposing is a parking ticket for $40 versus having to repeatedly go back to certain properties and it's a parking ticket no different than what we do for parking over the sidewalk or parking on the city right away. Very good. So is this, Mr. Is Schmidt? This, uh, did you see the email from uh, that we got this afternoon from Justin Whitehead about uh, this issue of unwilling and, and uh, the various? I am very well aware of, of, of Mr. Whitehead's issue over on Wellington. Um, it, in the other section, it does actually address this, and what we are doing is because R1 and R2 uh, single-family dwelling homes are restricted from parking on the grass, where your R3 and your R4s, which are your multiple duplexes, um, apartment buildings, they have no restrictions. So basically, um, what we are trying to do with the $40 parking ticket, along with, since you brought that up, along with, um, revising the R1 and R2 zoning to have R3 and R4 also added for the no parking on the grass. Um, you have a lot of homeowners that feel that rental properties have a little bit more um, leeway as far as their parking issues than property owners. Okay, further questions, Maria, on item 19? Thank you, Maria. We may have further questions on, on other ordinance changes. Um, okay. Item 19, no. I Yes, sir. Just give us your name again, just for, just for the record, please. James Hart. Thank you. And your address, Mr. Hart. Um, that just does address front yard parking, correct? I mean, because I've had to park out in the street, and um, I've had several of my vehicles ruined or severely damaged because of vandals and just poor drivers. Uh, our police force is very limited, and what they can do to uh, hold people accountable for the financial damage they caused. There's always a good story, oh yeah, it wasn't me. Somebody pulled in my driveway and backed in. I'm not responsible for that. Um, anyways, I like a lot of citizens, especially in my neighborhood, park in the backyard. Uh, I bought turf blocking so to you know, keep off the grass or to keep it from wrecking my yard yeah. and make a big mud pit. Thing is, though, is I want to make sure that this ordinance only affects people that park in the front yard. Which That's correct, isn't it, Maria? Okay. This this is just a front yard. This this ordinance just is front yard parking, Mr. Hart. Okay. okay. <laughs> Thank you. Madam Clerk, roll call vote on item 19, please. Mr. Jones. Yes. Mr. Schmidt. Yes. Mr. Lind. Yes. Mr. Morrissey. Yes. Mr. Welfer. Yes. Mr. Hart. Yes. Ms. Cole. Yes. Very good. The motion carries. I move we suspend the rules. Second. Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Lind? No. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Welfer? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? No. We'll take this up a third time next week. Item number 20, please. Mr. Schmidt? Item number 20, I'd like to make a motion to receive, file, consider, and pass for the second time an ordinance amending the 2007 Code of Ordinances of the City of Waterloo, Iowa by amending Chapter 3, General Penalty 1 3 2 E, Administrative Fees. Second. All right, uh, we'll need some clarification on that also, Maria, please. Basically, what we are asking for the um, administrative fees is um, to clarify it a little bit. We had in the current ordinance that it said any uh, code violation was subject to an administrative fee. However, you have things like waste containers, the weeds, and the snow removal that had their own separate administrative fees. So with the word any, we were asking to take the word any out and strictly um, put for the 100 to the $300 administrative fees to the 10 day notices and leave the waste cans, the snow removal and the weeds totally separate. This is actually a benefit, isn't it, to the citizens, Maria? Yes. I mean, this, this, this could is a benef yes, save, this is a benefit, save them some money. And it it um, eliminates any type of uh, double, double billing, double yes, charge. Double billing, it okay. takes it out of that. Okay. 
Very good. Council, do you have any questions regarding item 20? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lynn. What's the administrative fee on the, the waste can? The waste can, um, after the first notification, the first administrative fee is 100, the second one is 200, and it goes not to exceed 500. And then on this one, it's talking about the 100 and 300 administrative fees. Right. The so 10, basically, the, the difference? It says 100 and 300 administrative fees are for 10 day notice. Because your waste can is not a 10 day notice. Your waste can is a seven day notice. That's what I mean. What's, it, what's the 10 day notice? The first 10 time day notice would be like junk, garbage, um, vehicles parking in the front yard, vehicles parking in the backyard, any um, maybe zoning ordinance that we do, we give a standard 10 day notice. And that costs $100? Not the first time. If we go back for any type of um, violation after the first notice is given, then a $100 admin fee is added. Okay. And then for third and subsequent, it's a 300. Oh, I got you. All right. Thank you. Very good. Further questions? Madam Clerk? Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Yeah. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lynch? Yes. Very good. The motion carries. Mr. Mayor, make a motion suspending the rules. Second. Uh, Madam Clerk? Mr. Wilbur? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? No. Mr. Lynn? No. Mr. Morrison? Yes. Very good. The motion uh, fails. We'll take this up uh, next week. Also, item 21, please. Mr. Mayor. Ms. Cole. I move to receive, file, consider, and pass for the first time an ordinance amending the 2007 <coughs> Code of Ordinances of the City of Waterloo, Iowa, by amending Title VII Public Ways and Property Chapter 7-1-2 prohibited acts and conditions section B, snow and ice removal. That's elimination of notice after the first violation for snow removal. Very good, thank you. Second. And there is a second, Council, do we need explanation on this? Yeah. <laughs> Maria, please. <laughs> Just a minute. <laughs> long day. Maria Tiller, Code Enforcement Foreman. Um, basically, <coughs> Uh, we, when we first started out with this change, what we were looking at is vacant structures, absentee owners, um, dilapidated houses, vacant lots. Um, code enforcement spends a great deal of time with the weed and grass and the snow removal um, every single year. And a lot of the calls that we get are pretty redundant when it comes to the vacant structures and the vacant lots. Um, what we were proposing is that we are able to post properties one time and we also wanted to include your actual residential areas as well. Post properties one time given for snow and grass uh, removals throughout the year and for any subsequent time that we would have to go back that we are just able to see clearly that it is a violation, follow the process that we do without having to tag that property again and go back for another reinspection. Maria, would that be the same, would there be a notice for grass and then another notice for snow, or would yes. once you've written a notice, it's good all year long no, for both? It it's one for grass, one, one for snow. One for grass, one for snow. Right. Um, for some reason, the, the weed and grass one did not get put in here. Okay. This is just the snow. I'm sorry, okay. Oh, okay. Wait, it wasn't supposed to include that. We were going to table this. Okay. No, it's the other one. This is just, table so. So this is only snow. Yes, so we'll come back with the, the different section. And then I just got a quick question for the 10, okay. So elimination of the 10 day notice. Um, not not all together, just after the first one. After the first one. Yeah. I'm trying to work my way through this. Um, how, there's, all, there's currently a snow ordinance on file. Yes. And what is that? Snow ordinances, once we post it, you have 24 hours to remove it. So we got a 24 or 24 hour um, notice to remove the snow, and now we have a 10 day notice. I'm just trying, what? We, we don't have a 10 day notice for the snow and the weeds and the grass, no. Okay. Maria, uh, who does this notice go to? The notice get actually gets posted to the property. No notification is sent out like we normally do on a 10-day notice. 
We normally would send out a copy to a landlord or to a property owner that does not reside at that property. But with the weed and the snow, all we've ever done is post the property anyway for a 24 hour removal on that particular item. Well, I'm just wondering what about those situations where the landlord has a lease agreement with the tenant tenants or tenant that says that they are responsible for grass and or snow or ice removal um, what happens in those situations where the tenant is responsible for it and then the uh, tenant moves that is technically between the landlord and the tenant if if the tenant hasn't notified the landlord or vice versa is, couldn't that be a potential problem no no I, I, and I think it, we, we want to make clear everybody's saying weeds grass and snow and th this is not this is just snow and ice snow and we are ice. not talking about long grass or weeds or summertime we're talking about snow and ice removal that's it yes okay and and there is no 10-day notice on snow and ice if no. we get a complaint or if you see a violation you post the property they have 24 hours to remove it yes and if they don't they get a ticket if they don't, then we send. Then you. I'm sorry. We you send in the contractors to remove. And, the and then they have to pay for it. Yes. And what you're asking for is that subsequent violations, you don't have to post it for the 24 hours. You yes. can just send in the contractor and have it removed, and they and the land, uh, the property owner has to pay for it. Yes, as long as we show that it is clearly in violation. Okay. I, I guess, uh, the council, do you have any more? I have one question. I have a question. Okay. So. It, uh, snows um, they don't somebody doesn't remove the snow say it's a tenant responsibility mm -hmm. um, they get a 24-hour notice yes then it snows two more times you can go out and have a contractor remove the snow those times yes and what if it snowed the next day and the next day and the next day we're just kind of piling on here for landlords that are not don't know that they got the notice yet it just seems like we're compressing the violation to kind of hammer somebody that may not be aware that a contractor is going to come out and remove the snow for it. Um, the way that we have done the snow and ice removal in the past is the same way that we are going to continue to do it now, which is just the posting of the property. We have never given a 10 day standard notice. We have never sent notice out to landlords or to other property owners. We have always posted the property. Snow and ice also becomes a safety issue when it comes to bus stops. Um, we had quite a few intersections this year where we had, um, even on West 9th and, um, I think it's West 9th and Grant Street, we had a child slip out onto 9th Street. So we are not going to change that standard. The only thing that we are asking is that we give one notice per season, per property, versus having to go back five, six, seven, eight times and post the property, go back for reinspection, send out the contractor. This way it would ensure that we get quicker response from our contractors to get such areas, such as a lot of these bus stop areas that we had a lot of issues with this year due to the amount of snow and ice to have it cleared in a more reasonable time. That reasonable time is 24 hours or 48 hours or how long is that? that they have to clean it themselves? They have 24 hours from the time that we post it. They have 48 hours from the time that the snow stops. 24 hours, so you're actually giving 72 hours. You're giving three days to clean off your snow and ice before we send the city contractors in. Okay, thank you, Maria. Yep. Yes, sir? Forest Dillaboo, 1725 Huntington Road. As a owner of properties that I don't live on, I think this is a uh, rough really rough like councilman lynn stated because i should have an opportunity to clean up the mess if it's there or force my tenants to do this such and without giving me any notice even the first time you are you know subjecting me to maybe hundreds thousands i don't know how much money and i wouldn't even know it i don't drive by every one of my properties every day and even if they did post it, that doesn't mean they're not going to tear it off and throw it in the garbage. You know, I should have a right to defend myself or take care of my properties. In the near future, you folks are going to know who lives in all of our properties. You're requiring that for the building inspection department. 
So you could, you could branch off of that and say, okay, Forrest owns that property. We will call Forrest. You don't have to send me a registered letter. You don't have to hand deliver it to the door. Just contact me and say, hey, Forrest, the snow needs shoveled. But to drive by and say, oh, it needs it again, it's a judgment call, number one. And you're going to convict me if you send somebody out to clean it. That's like a conviction. And you're going to fine me. That's the fineness for the people to clean it. And I think we ha should have a right to defend our rights and, and maintain our properties. Like I say, you've got an excellent opportunity coming in the near future because you're going to know who lives there and who owns it. Thanks, Forrest. Jim Chapman, 224 Birch. I have no problem with the weed, uh, the grass, and the snow. I do have a problem with the ice. This year, I think I brought 50 pounds of the friendly free, 10 below zero stuff, and I was constantly putting it on out there, trying to get rid of the ice. I'll be 75 years old. I can't be out there with a pick and a shovel, so I, I do have a problem with this, you know. I try. So I think that they ought to set forth some effort if you out there putting 50 pounds of this friendly free stuff to try to get. I don't want no mailman or paper boy to fall on mine. I don't want anybody. Mm -hmm. But at least I try to get rid of it. Thanks, Jim. Patricia King, I'm not a property owner. I am a tenant, and I'm a disabled tenant. And I try to get the snow up all the time. Sometimes, even after I finish the driveway and I see the trucks driving around, it's like they wait until I get through. The <laughs> snow plow comes along, piles it right back up, piles it on the corner, and I, in order to get around, I have to go to the bus. I have to dig out in order to get to the bus. So sometimes it's not always the landlords or the tenants fault that snow is piled where it's it piled. So that's something else maybe need to be looked at. Thank you, Patricia. I thought they just did that to me. <laughs> no, Mayor, they don't. Maxine Tisdale, 438 Cottage Street, Waterloo. I want to make sure that I understand this because this code enforcement lady here, I've seen your people on my street. Last year, the property down the street was vacated and nobody sent anybody. It was tagged, but you didn't send anybody out there to clean it. I paid somebody because I slipped and fell going down to visit another neighbor. So my thing of it is, these people that take people's houses for nursing homes, the state has or the nursing homes have, and if you're tagging those and you don't notify them, they're leaving that property with that snow and that ice there. And if the neighborhood people don't clean it up, it doesn't get done. I know. I lived in one. Thanks, Maxine. Jack Black, 227 Downing Avenue. And I wanted to ask this young lady, City property, do you send them out a notice if they don't clean the Just, sidewalk? Yeah. Jack, uh, you need to talk to us, please. We'll, we'll answer your question for you, if you would, please. What was the question? I just was wondering, do, does the city send out a notice to uh, city-owned property if they don't plow? The reason I ask, the, the parking lot that's in back of our church, which is no, no longer ours, mm -hmm. but all winter, and I've been, we've been told we don't park there. Well, we do park there. Mm -hmm. We've cleaned it ourselves, the sidewalk and, and parking area in there because it was never clean. And the sidewalk on the extreme south end, we don't touch, which still belongs to the city, and that has not been cleaned at all this winter. Thank you. That, uh, I would appreciate it, Jack, if those conditions happen in the future that you do notify the, the, my office okay. or the city. Well, I mean, and we that, know that, that property that, uh, has, has been given to someone yeah. else. Yeah, we, but wherever it is, yeah. uh, we're, okay. we're, we need to do uh, uh, take care of our own backyard, yeah. All right. per se. Thank you, so Mayor. You bet, John. Further comments from Council? Uh, Maria? How, do, how are we going to know that the, either the, that the person responsible for cleaning that is made aware of that? How are we going to know that? And how are they going to know that? That they, that some, something didn't get done? This is the same, I, I mean, this is the same process that we have used for a long time with the snow removal and the weeds. The snow removal, we have always posted the property, always posted the property, and we do not require, there is nothing that states that it has to be all the way down to the cement. There's nothing that states, all it says is for people like Mr. Chapman, 
who get out there and yes we had a huge problem with ice this year but for those people that got out there and they laid sand and they did salt basically what that ordinance actually states is that they have to make a reasonable effort to remove that it's not saying that they have to get out there with an ice pick and try to pick that ice all the way down to the cement but we have not changed we're not changing the way that we posted it what how we post the property we've been doing that has been done ever since I've been with the city five years. I, I still have a problem with the river. I just have a problem with it uh, in rental properties uh, that uh, the landlord may not be responsible for it all and never is notified, especially with a, a tenant who decides to move. And then nobody's cleaning it up. And they got an absent landlord. So how's that it, how does that address that situation? Thank you. Jim Wall, city attorney. Maybe I can help answer the question. Uh, nobody can be 100% fair with this. The ordinance has always been an attempt to balance the interests of the public and the neighbors with those of the landlord and the owner of the property and the tenant. We can't tell looking at a house or any property whose responsibility it is vis-a-vis -vis the tenant or the landlord or some contractor. We can't tell whose responsibility it is. But the neighbors and the people who use that street and sidewalk uh, have a right to expect it's going to be clean. And so we put notices on the uh, property just like we always have and wait 24 hours. Now this is already 48 hours after the snow has stopped. And if that hasn't been cleaned, the balance here, the balance that city councils up till now have always accepted is that the public and the neighbors have a right to have that cleaned. If the property owner and their tenant have to fight it out over who pays the ticket, let them. But meantime, we've got to clean the sidewalk. So that's what the balance is here. Can we take a vote, please? Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Can I make a motion to table and refer to the committee? There's a motion to table. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second to table and refer it to a committee. Uh, we'll take a roll call vote on that motion. Mr. Hart? No. Ms. Cole? No. Mr. Young? No. Mr. Smith? Yes. No. Very good. The motion to table fails. We'll uh, take a motion, please, on uh, the motion and second that's on the floor. Madam Clerk, please. It's a roll call vote. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lynn? No. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Hart? No. Very good. That motion uh, passes. There is a second motion to suspend the rules if somebody would like to make. I move we suspend the rules. Second. Madam Clerk. Mr. Jones. No. Mr. Schmidt. No. Mr. Lynn. No. Mr. Morrissey. Yes. Mr. Wilbur. Yes. Mr. Hart. to pass about to the fact that the first time an ordinance amended then it says motion suspend the rules and there's motion to consider and pass for the third time is there supposed to be a number two I'm, I, you know it hasn't been, my, hasn't been my meeting today but it, it, that last okay. line, line should say motion to pass for the second and third time and it up here okay. Ms. Councilman Hart and it's it's uh, uh, the the the, term, the word second has been left out of there inadvertently I'm sure well, my motion to suspend the rules is no. Very good. The motion to suspend the rule, uh, did we go around? Uh, fails. Okay, so we're on to item number 22, please. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Hart. Move to instruct superintendent of traffic operation to prepare plans, specifications, form of contract, et cetera, for the purchase of video detection cameras for I-380 ramps at San Martin Drive and I-380 at Mitchell Avenue. Very good. Council, do you have questions or comments regarding item number 22? Mr. Schmidt, uh, Sandy, would you tell us what item number 22 is, please? Uh, Sandy Grieco, Superintendent of Traffic Operations. These are video detection cameras. Um, what they are doing is replacing the loops that are in the 
the roadway itself. Um, the DOT is destroying our loops with their reconstruction program. And so they are in turn purchasing the cameras for us and we're installing them. Right. They're not monitoring cameras. Mm -hmm. Further questions? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And then I move to receive and file plan, specification, form of contract, et cetera. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I move to adopt the resolution, preliminarily approving plan, specification, form of contract, et cetera. Second. And that is a roll call vote, please, Madam Clerk. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Wilker? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Mr. Cole? Yes. Mr. Yes. Very good. The motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I move to adopt a resolution setting date of hearing and bid opening as May 5th, 2014, and instruct City Clerk to publish notice of plans, specifications, form of contract. Second. And that is a roll call vote also, please, Madam Clerk. Mr. Lund? Yes. Mr. Morphy? Yes. Mr. Wilker? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Mr. Cole? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Very good. The motion carries. Uh, last item for business, Mr. number 23, Ms. Cole. I move we instruct Community Planning and Development Director to prepare plans, specs, form of contract, et cetera, for <coughs> asbestos abatement services for the following properties, 3137 Independence, 2375 Independence, 4012 Leversey Road, <coughs> and 425 Almond Street. Second. Very good. Uh, Council, do you have questions or comments regarding item 23? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I move we receive and file plan specs, form of contract, et cetera. Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I move we adopt a resolution preliminarily approving plan specs, form of contract, et cetera. Second. And it's a roll call vote, Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Morphy? Yes. Mr. Wilker? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mr. Lynn. Yes. Very good. The motion carries. I move we adopt a resolution setting date of hearing and bid opening as May 5th, 2014, and instruct City Clerk to not publish notice of plan, specs, form of contract, et cetera. Second. Very good. Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Wilker? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Morphy? Yes. Very good. Thank you, Council. That motion carries. And ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of our regularly scheduled business tonight. Uh, it is time for oral presentations. If there's anyone in the audience that would like to speak to the mayor or council, now is the time to do so. Please come to the microphone. Give us your name and address, and please limit your comments to three minutes. Randy Herod, 111 Highland. Um, I have a packet here for each one of you to sort of expedite this a little bit, I'm going to say. But let me first say that... Uh, this is going to be about the animal control thing. And my reason for doing this is what the mayor mentioned uh, a week uh, back the last couple of weeks, I think, that we want to make sure that this gets in, not stopped, but in and well done. Um, I will also say that uh, one reason I think you should listen to me <laughs> is I have been involved with animals, dogs in particular, since the early 60s. I've been involved with about seven or eight animal organizations across four states. Uh, I have been training dogs since 1971, and uh, I, uh, for a while, was uh, two different times. I was on the board of directors of Humane Society and was interim director for a while between permanent directors. Uh, so let me first ask here, has anybody been through the new Waterloo Animal Facility, the new one that's going to be over at uh, 11th and Blackhawk? Anybody on council? Yes. One, has anybody been through the Humane Society facility? Yes. Two, I, I mention that because I find it very hard how anybody can make decisions when they haven't been through the facilities. Uh, this list of questions will be available to each council member and the mayor, so I'll keep my comments to a narrow area. Uh, that is the Waterloo Animal Site over here. While it is obvious that such a site must be in a plan that is in process. It does cost money to make it a running operation. And such monies were not in the original proposal. I don't think I'm in error about that. 
on which the council voted. Although requested, such site development monies have, as far as I know, not been presented to the city council for any kind of vote on allocation. My concern about this is twofold. First, it would seem that the allocation of such monies for this specific use fall under the responsibility of the city council. Or maybe there is another process to allocate the use of monies. If so, I'd really like to find out what it is. Secondly, how much is the, uh, the retrofitting of this site going to cost? It is my understanding that reworking the site has already begun, uh, at least that's my understanding, and that animals in some cases are already uh, in process there. Uh, I might be mistaken on that. And Iowa Department of Agriculture and Land Stewardship Pound License number 10410 has been issued for this site with the following items checked as accept acceptable by Inspector 11, Monica Stryker. They're here, and I'll put that out with the packet, and you can go over and, and make your own decision about the things that have been said are okay. Thank you, Randy, very much. Appreciate it. And we will, uh, at some, sorry, sometime in the very near future, have uh, a work session by Sandy uh, explaining what the budget is for the animal control shelter. I'm through. Whoever else wants to make money. Please, please. Uh, James Hart again. Um, I, I'm a musician. Um, I also ride motorcycles. And um, so a few things might not seem related. But unfortunately, uh, I have been, I've been turned in for making loud music at my house. Uh, I went out to Radio Shack. I bought a decibel meter several years ago. And I understand that the city ordinance for noise ordinance, which is specifically for the house, you guys have been very detailed, a uh, decibel meter weighting of A, and it can't breach 80 decibels from, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, this might have changed since I looked it up, 7 a.m. to 11. In a residential district, you have up to 80 decibels in your house that you can legally make. Um, then there's noise disturbance, which is any noise. If you can hear it at all, you can be ticketed for it. But I would assume that that would be outside the residence, since you're so specific on not only what zone is a residence. There's three zones. I'm sure you guys all know. Some of you guys don't. But there's three zones. There's a residence, a business, and a quiet district. Quiet districts have 10 less decibels than residential districts. And business districts have 10 decibels more that they can make than what residential districts can. So as I said, residential districts are usually, I think it's 7 to 11 at night. You can make from uh, it, anything under 80 decibels. Um, so anyways, you can hear my music from inside my house sometimes. But it is under the decibel limit, which is 80 decibels for inside a residence in a residential district. Um, now, that being said, there are a lot of things that breach. 80 decibels at 25 feet, as this sound ordinance and the noise ordinance are both violated. You'd be violating it. Uh, the motorcycles, I'm inside my house on the second story, and I can hear some of them three or four blocks away. As I said, I ride motorcycles. There are certain things you can do to make them louder on purpose. First, you can take off the baffle. Next, you could get an attachment to put inside the muffler to make it louder. Many people do. It's really annoying. It's really upsetting. I, they, they argue that, yes, the, you, want, you want people to pay attention if you're on a motorcycle, and if it's louder, everybody will look. Well, sure they will, but they might not see the car in front of them or the car beside them if they're looking over to see where this motorcycle's at, and it's two blocks away. So is it safer for the motorcycle rider? I don't know, especially if there's two or three of them. I'm looking at this one because he's closer, and I might hit that one because I got my head turned. I think it's argumentative at best. So I, I fail to see why that is not enforced more prudently by uh, our officials in the city, our police department. The other thing is the loud music, which, again, I'm a musician. Sorry. The, 
of these people have stereos and you can't even hear the music. All you can do is feel the vibration. And again, I'll be in my house. I have a stone wall house. It's made Mr. of clay. Mr. Hart, so, so your, your request is that we be more vigilant in, in enforcing the noise ordinances? When they're actually breached, yes. Okay, and, thank you. And maybe, you know, sound sure ordinance we're maybe should there be looked are, into as it, it applies okay. to residents. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Dad Black, 227 Downing Avenue. Several months ago uh, at Queen of Peace, we lost the parking lot in back of us. And at that time, I requested uh, to take consideration of removing the parking meters on our north and east side. I don't know if any decision mm -hmm. has come to that, but we'd kind of like to know. Jack, I'll, uh, if, if, you know, if you and I have talked a couple of different yeah. times, and we were kind of waiting for the winter to get done with, and the okay. snow and the ice and so forth, that's done with. Uh, how about if uh, uh, today's Monday? Let's let's meet sometime this week, okay. and uh, I'll give you a call at the church. At call at the church, and, and, and get a hold of me. Yeah, and and I'll come by, and uh, we'll. I may bring Sandy with me, or we'll take a look at it. We'll we'll get that taken okay. care of. I'll try to get. I, I I won't get them removed right away because that's a process that we have to get them taken out. Yeah. But uh, we will start that removal process of those strategic meters, and I can assure you that you're not going to receive any citations, even if the meters aren't well, out. Number at the church is two two six three six five five. I think I have that, but I will definitely give you a call this week. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Mayor. Jack. Mr. Mayor, I did just happen to notice today they were we were over there taking out the light poles in that parking lot. So I would assume that's you know process maybe just started. Okay, yeah. thanks. Yep. <coughs> David Dreyer, 3145 West 4th Street. I want to fire three, three things at you. Uh, first, I see this uh, number 23 is a asbestos removal. How much property do we own that we keep having to take asbestos out of? Uh, number two is, as I brought up last council meeting, performance bond. Has anything gotten forward on that? And. Uh, Final thing would be memorials on the road. Uh, saw that in the paper. My thought on that is that the distraction, just like texting, talking on a cell phone, etc. Thank you. Thank you, uh, David. Uh, Mr. Walsh, you had re requested the last time that Mr. Dreyer asked about performance bonds. You wanted the opportunity to talk about performance bonds. Can you take a second? Everybody's been through them quite a bit tonight. But the, the purpose of the performance bond isn't what is implied here. The performance bond is intended to make sure that the financial performance of the contractor lives up to what the contract promises. So if the promise, if the, the contractor goes broke in the middle of a job, you call on the bond to perform. It's not the quality of the work that we're looking at. It's whether they do it or not. Uh, the quality of the work, of course, should be inspected, but that isn't what the bond's yeah. for. Yeah, and Mr. Dreyer, I know what you're talking about, and, and we're, we, okay, so we, why can't we do it? Well, we, we do do it. Uh, okay. Thank you, uh, Ms. Walsh. Thank you, Mr. Dreyer. Is there anyone else? Uh, motion to receive and file oral comments on the bond. Second. Anyone else? <coughs> All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Very good. We are uh, adjourned. Thank you. Aye.